Hello and welcome to this uh, FlyGSM Q400 radar introduction video. I'm Amy, I'm the developer behind the UNS that you've been using in the Q400 as well as the subject of today's video, the weather radar. Uh, starting in XPain 12.3, we've got access to a new weather radar which this update introduces to the Q400. We're going to be working with the MFD today and the radar control panel which is here behind the throttle quadrant. We are currently holding at Tartan, south of Edinburgh, and the radar is off. If we turn the mode knob, the second knob here from the left, one click clockwise, we can see it says wait here. That's because the antenna needs to warm up. That warm up process will take between 10 seconds and 2 minutes, depending on how long the antenna has been off. And once the wait disappears, we can see we're in standby, in standby mode, so the radar is available. We can turn the knob all the way clockwise to have, get a quick radar test. We will get a couple of sweeps before the radar tells us that everything is okay. Having checked that, we'll go two clicks counterclockwise to go into the default radar mode. We get WX on, indicating that the weather radar is operating properly as well as the tilt of the antenna announced here, 2.3 degrees up. The beam is about 4 degrees wide, so 2 degrees above this and 2 degrees below this. And we can change it with this rightmost knob here. As we reduce it, we can see we start to get ground returns, that's the radar beam impacting the ground. And we're starting to see something interesting here. The ground seems to disappear. I have it on good authority that there is indeed grounds north of Edinburgh. What is actually happening is that the beam, when it goes through all of those pretty strong cells, gets absorbed, refracted and reflected so much that the radar thinks there's not much here because it doesn't get many returns. What we can do is click here on the RCT button, which turns on the Rain Echo Attenuation Compensation Technique mode, which essentially dynamically increases the gain as we go through strong cells to compensate for that attenuation. If we increase the range, we can see there's even an area painted in cyan here. What that means is that the radar knows that the beam has been so attenuated here that this doesn't mean there is no returns here, this means I cannot see there. This is fully, this is what we call radar shadowing, I cannot see anything in there, be careful. Cyan areas are essentially danger zones where the radar cannot tell you what's happening. We'll reduce the range again. We don't need to see this far. We're only going to Edinburgh today. Now, we might be working at a very small range uh, for many reasons. We might be looking at some data close by on the MFD, but we might be missing things. So what we'll use is a target mode, which we'll turn on using the target button. And if the radar detects something, in the 15 nautical miles beyond the current MFD range, it will paint a yellow alert here. And if we increase the range, we can see that indeed there's quite significant returns there. There is even more further down. We might also be in a situation where we only care about what's directly ahead of us, not really what's, a, what's happening on the sides, and we want to see something, let's say there's a developing thunderstorm, and we want to see that the updates on this more quickly, so we can click the SECT button for sector, and it will reduce the sector from 120 degrees to 60 degrees wide, which means we get updates more frequently because the antenna has a smaller area to scan. Finally, if we click on the STAB button here, we turn off stabilization of the antenna, which means that the antenna is not any more stabilized in pitch and roll. It's not very useful because it means that as the pitch of the aircraft changes, so does the pitch of the antenna, and same with roll, which means that we're, when we're in turns, we'll get very weirdly shaped returns, which will not give us the whole picture. We'll re-enable stabilization, and turn off target. Now, radars are not ideal to paint ground, but they can be useful. Let's say, for example, you had an EGPWS failure and you couldn't get this lovely terrain map that we've got here. What we can do is click this knob one detent clockwise and you can see that the color mapping changes. We're going to point the antenna down at the ground because after all that's what we want to look at. And we can now play with the gain knob, which is 
the leftmost knob here and we just hit a bit and we can see it's not perfect but we can see there's quite a few returns here that's because of the Petlands and the Cumbrian Hills south of Edinburgh uh, and we can see generally returns for various ter terrain features it's never going to be extremely detailed but we can at least see areas of other plains or in this situation water all over there not as good as a enhanced GPWS terrain map, but still can become useful in a pinch. And this concludes the introduction to the weather radar. There are quite a few modes. Uh, they all have their place in various situations. One thing to keep in mind is that the gain knob here will only actually impact the gain if you are not in react or target mode. These modes use a pre-programmed gain which is calibrated by Honeywell to give you what they deem an accurate picture of the weather around you. What's also important to keep in mind when playing with the gain knob especially is to never leave it on a very low gain for too long because if you look at this, on a very low gain, I'm seeing nothing ahead of me, even though there's actually quite a big cell, and you might end up getting trapped in dangerous weather without having seen it coming. I hope this video was helpful, uh, and I hope you have many interesting flights with the, radar, with the, with the new weather radar. Uh, it's been Amy, and have safe flights.